Hello and welcome to episode 3 of The Battle. I'm your host, Andrew Weber, and thank you for joining. I have no structure to what these are going to look like, how long they're going to take. It's all going to take time for me to implement the length of the episodes and, and all of that stuff, what I'm going to talk about. So, getting back into it here, I took a long hiatus. Uh, I got busy with school and work and other things, but I made it to the point where music is now my main source of income, which has freed up a ton of time. I'm still working part-time as a personal trainer uh, in a, at a gym out in Chesterfield, Missouri. I've been loving it. Fitness is a huge part of my life. Uh, it always has been since I was young. I played sports uh, as a little kid, but I got into the gym in high school, and it's been super important to me, so I like keeping the personal training around for now, one, because I enjoy it, and two, because I could use some additional income. I'm still building this business as much as I can. I just needed to free up some time, and I'm finally to the point where I am able to do that. Thus, here is episode three of The Battle, and once again, thank you for joining me. I've got my phone here with a ton of notes. As you can see, a ton of writing, so I'm going to be peeking at this throughout the whole episode just to make sure I'm on track. But today I want to talk about how to find your purpose, in quotes, your purpose in life, um, and and how you can kind of dial into your purpose, your passions, and make that the focus of your life, along with family and relationships, you know, friends, um, and all that, all that good stuff. So... Your purpose or your passion, I think, is what you are meant to do in your life. That's what I always have believed. And I have, I, I, it took me a long time to find what my purpose was. And I, I actually just recently found my purpose. I knew kind of the, the direction that I wanted to go ever since 2016. That was my senior year of high school. And as I said before, I was an athlete growing up. My main sport was baseball. I played basketball, a little bit of football here and there, some soccer when I was real young, but baseball was the main sport, and it was my whole life. It was my first love, I like to say. Um, And I, I really dialed into that. I was super focused. I wanted to play professionally. Unfortunately... I have an eye condition, which I've talked about before. It's called amblyopia. So my outlook as a hitter and a position player was not looking good. And I was too stubborn to realize it at the time. So in the long run, I was never cut out or meant to be a baseball player. It just happened to be part of my life, one of my first loves. And uh, so in 2016, Mm. I was trying to... I was trying hard to be able to go play in college somewhere. And I think I could have probably walked on at a small school, but eventually I decided not to do that. And this is a story that I've told before, but I'm going to tell it again. In my last tournament, I was, we were traveling and we were down in Jackson, Tennessee. And I was slated to pitch one of the games leading up to the finals in the tournament. Well, it turns out storms rolled in and all the games got canceled. The whole tournament got rained out. So we go back to the hotel and I found a heads up penny with, uh, well, I'll get to, to what year the penny was here in a second, but I found a heads up penny thinking it was good luck. Like I'll go play in college somewhere. I'll figure it out. But I had just started playing the guitar again and started singing as I was playing. It was kind of a new hobby I was developing just in case baseball didn't continue on for me. And so we leave the hotel, go to dinner with a couple people from the team, and we come back. And I was upset because I didn't get to pitch one last time in high school, and my my baseball career was potentially over. But I had picked up this new hobby guitar, so we come back to the hotel, and in the same spot that I found the heads-up penny, I found a guitar pick. And that was just kind of a crazy wild connection because I knew that my vision was going to hinder my athletic performance at the plate. 
and in the field. And I had kind of given up on the idea of pitching. I thought it was boring, which I regret now. But I, I, I was leaning towards not playing in college, essentially. So this guitar pick was kind of like leading me into the path of pursuing music now. I, For some reason, I have always enjoyed just working on the things that I like. Things that I have to do for money just to pay bills have always irritated me. I like a lot of things, but I'm not passionate about a lot of things. So in school, it was always hard for me to focus and sit there and study. I like being active. I like hands-on learning. So this was leading me to kind of go stray away from baseball, think more about music and the guitar pick and the penny kind of confirmed that identity in me as now I'm a musician. <laughs> Screw this baseball thing. I'm going to go play music. Um, and what's crazy is that that penny that I found heads up had my birth year on it. So really ever since that moment, I have been, I would say, dedicated to building a career in music. I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't really. I've just been making small progressions, you know, a little bit at a time. I have a small, small background in music. I was in a choir in elementary school for like one or two years, and that's really all the training I have besides guitar lessons. But I don't know how to read sheet music. I mean... I really just have the ability to hold a guitar, figure out what sounds good, and then play it. I know some chord notes, and that's about it. But I took what I had in my hands and started creating and writing songs. And from that point, it just started to build and grow. And so 2016, that's what I decided I was doing. I brought my guitar with me to college, played covers in my room, and pissed off my roommates that I didn't know. They were all random random roommates. And a couple of them are still my good friends today. Um, and I'm sure they were pissed when I was playing. I mean, just <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I'm a, I play the guitar loud. I sing loud. I yell when I sing. It's I would have been pissed at me. So uh, I guess shout out to them. Thanks for putting up with my... Uh, my loud activities and my loud hobbies. Um, but I, I, st- I started doing the covers. I started writing some of my own stuff in 2019. And then from there, I got into, you know, playing at one local wine bar. Um, man, what was the name of that place? Wine on Washington. Wine on Washington in Kirksville, Missouri. It does not exist anymore. But that was my first paid gig. And I made, I think, <laughs> I think I made $300 my first gig. I mean, I was, I Google searched how much to charge. And uh, people had always told me that I was talented. So I figured I could charge a little bit more um, than the average person and I was an idiot for doing that. <laughs> I just can't believe, I mean, $100 an hour, playing my first paid gig, knowing nothing about live sound. I'm just, I'm I'm very thankful for them for letting me play. It got my foot in the door, got my feet wet. And, uh, I mean, that's where my career started after that. I, I, I was super nervous. I was, I, I was nervous for every gig that I did at that place. And I was playing for sometimes nobody, sometimes my close friends. But that's how you got to start. Um, as a live performer, you just got to go out and do it and do it more and do it more and do it more until you're comfortable. And sometimes you're still uncomfortable even when you know what you're doing. I've been doing this, like I said, since 2019. It's 2023. I've got some shows under my belt and sometimes still depending on the day or what I've got going on or how I'm feeling I get nervous as I'll get out up on stage but some days if I'm feeling good you know I can kind of 
project my confidence out a little bit more and and that's when it gets really fun and that's that's what keeps me doing it that's probably what keeps most musicians doing it is they just get in the zone on stage and and when you see people react in a positive way when you're playing that's that's a good feeling so i guess my my point off of that is if you have something that you're really passionate about in my opinion i think you should go in on it you you probably don't need to go all in on it right away you got to be smart about how you're planning but if you're good at what you do you like what you're doing there's a way to make income from it why would you not go after that and that's kind of the whole point of this episode number three is getting into what you're good at kind of planning around life as you're building it taking care of what needs to be done you know living making some sort of money I think it's smart to get your degree probably and I think for a lot of people they like having the security of having a paid position like a salary or an hourly rate and I don't get me wrong I like having that security as well but I am so focused on building the business, or I was, I, I, I still am, but I was so focused on building my business and my brand as an artist that doing all the other stuff, I was in school, um, I was getting my exercise science degree, graduated with that in 2020, and I um, went out and got a job once the pandemic, once things opened up after the pandemic as a trainer. Um, I really enjoy the job, but to, to get to the point where I was making good money, I had to put a ton of extra time and effort into it. And that was not suiting my business creativity and overall productiveness the way I wanted to. So I went back to school to, (laughs) to kind of, I mean, I knew I, I, I knew that I didn't want to be a teacher which is what I went back to school for I knew that I didn't want to be a chiropractor which is what I tried next but both of those things I knew I could be good at so I just kind of stuck with it until I figured out for sure it was not worth my time and eventually in this year early this year 2023 in February I decided I'm going to find a job that pays me hourly that I somewhat enjoy, which is personal training, keeping fitness in my life. And hopefully that is some security for me to pay for living, food, um, utilities, all of that, all of the necessities. And still open up some time for me to to put my time in to growing the, the business, building the business. and. It's long days, but I feel like now I'm on the right path. Um, even though I'm not doing only music, it's still the main focus for me. And at some point, I will only be doing music. But I just, uh, I have gotten really lucky with the position that I found. My My boss is... An entrepreneur himself he started the the company from the ground up and he is very good about helping his employees and the people around him with personal development and personal growth and and really going after what they want to do so after I got hired like <laughs> I guess maybe a month month maybe two months in we got to talk and I was working full-time And I said, I have to go and do music full time. And I'm to the point where I can cut my hours back here. If that's cool with you, go part time and really try to build this business. And he was and has been very supportive of that decision, which I'm very lucky to have found because most bosses would not be that way. Most bosses would say, 
No, I need you full time. You've only been here for a month. We had an agreement. Like, you got to stay full time or you're done. And I'm just thankful that he has been flexible with me, keeping me around, uh, reducing my hours. This week is my first part time week. Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just real lucky um, with the connections that I've made, the the people I have met, and the support that I'm getting from the people around me, my family, my friends, like I said, my boss, um, my my other coworkers. No one, you know, outright says to my face, "What are you doing?" And there's no future in this. Everyone's just very supportive. But I think to get to the point where people can be supportive, if you do decide to go after your passion or building your own business, I mean, you got to put some work in. You have to learn how to become efficient in the tasks that you have to complete. And you have to become efficient with how you spend your time. You... There's no time for, you know, sitting around playing video games, which I was doing when I was in school. Um, There's just no time for for being lackadaisical. And you really have to kind of set goals in, in the correct way, which I'm currently working on and trying to get better at. And... It, it takes a lot of work, so you have to really, really, really enjoy, you know, what what you do and have a purpose behind it. And this is going to lead me to my next point. When I first started the music thing, I had no true purpose, I don't believe. I just knew I had a feeling, a gut feeling that... That's what I was supposed to be doing, was playing the music. And I don't really know how to describe in words how to come to that realization yourself. And I wish I could help you more with that. I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking about how I came to that conclusion and trying to put it in words down the road in future episodes. But at the moment right now... I don't have any words to describe how I how I knew that I was supposed to be doing this. And uh, I, I just had a feeling, and I went after it, and I was probably stupid for it, but I've learned a lot through, you know, through the whole journey. Um, and I, I love playing. I love what I do, so I just had to go for it. But like I said, I had no purpose. I was just doing it because I loved it. I didn't want to answer to anybody. I wanted to have the freedom to do what I wanted with my day. And that's kind of what got me into it. Um, I didn't know any entrepreneurs around me at the time when I started. I had high school friends, college buddies. They were all going to get their degrees to go work for somebody else, and so was I. But I knew at the end of the day, that was not the right fit for me. I like building things. I like creating something and then seeing a finished product. I just, that's the type of stuff that I enjoy. And I like, like I said before, learning with my hands on, and in school it's a lot of studying, so I I wasn't passionate about that type of thing I like learning but I like learning with my hands on and being able to be creative and uh, thinking on my feet making small changes you know in, in a split second notice not studying books taking notes especially information that changes on a day to day basis which is what happens in the the health and wellness industry quite often i i think there's always new research new studies coming out so i didn't really find my purpose until this year i had been 
I mean, essentially just promoting myself since 2019, trying to become an artist, trying to become famous for no reason. Um, and that, that pursuit without a purpose brought on a lot of negativity in my life, a lot of, uh, I would say mental illness, you know, struggling with anxiety and depression and not feeling like I'm doing well enough, not feeling like, I guess just not feeling fulfilled. I was, I was doing this thing with no purpose. I knew I needed to do it, but I had to decide on what my purpose was going to be. So I really took a step back and, and my, my boss now has really helped me kind of He's really kind of guided me in this direction of finding my purpose, and that is to help other people. That's the main point. If you're going to start your own business, if you're going to pursue what you love, you should not be doing it for yourself. That's going to cause issues down the road. That's going to cause issues not only for you, but the people around you with your actions. So I had to take a step back. And I took a lot of notes. I wrote a lot of stuff down about what my true purpose is with this music thing. You know, how I can help other people while I have this platform that I've been building just for myself up until this year. And I have found a whole new drive for what I'm doing. That's one of the reasons I got back into the the podcast, which... I went back and listened to the first two episodes and I was on the right track. We were talking about life and learning lessons, you know, personal development, which is what I'm talking about now, but I didn't have the intent of truly helping other people with what I was saying. I was just looking to grow my audience. And at this point now, I honestly, I mean, I care about my audience. I want people to hear my message. I want people to find their passions. I want, I want people to enjoy their life and what they do in their life. But if I have four listeners and they're really taking something from what I'm saying, that's good enough for me. I don't care about having thousands of streams or thousands of listens. I just want somebody to take something from what I'm saying. Because like I said, I touched on a little bit. I have had low, low points in my life. Doing things that I was not passionate about. Doing things that I felt were pointless because I didn't have my purpose. And uh, it, it led to a lot of destruction in my life. You know, I was abusing drugs and alcohol. My relationships with people were not good. My conversational skills were not good because I was thinking about my appearance to them. I wasn't thinking about how I could help them in any way. And uh, my mindset was just jacked up. So... If I have any advice for you people who are looking to follow your passions, build your business, build your brand, do whatever, be creative, I would say you got to start somewhere. And it's all right if you start working for yourself and for your own personal benefits. I think that's good, too. But you have to kind of mold your personal benefits to help others around you. And that's where you're going to find your, the most passion. You're going to find your dedication. You're going to find your drive to do it. Otherwise you're just going to be sitting in no man's land causing trouble. Now a fair warning to you. The the pursuit of building a business and I said this already 
but I want to talk a little bit more about it. It's a long, lonely road. (laughs) If you're really doing what you need to be doing, you're working over 12 hours a day consistently. You are running low on sleep. You are conserving your income as much as possible. You are always thinking about the next thing. And if you don't have the right people around you, it can be a lonely road. And that's kind of what I'm working towards now. I have found some great people in the local music industry in St. Charles County, just outside of St. Louis, that I am trying to build connections with people that I look up to, other songwriters, other performers, just trying to find people who are like me, because I've been running this thing on my own, not knowing jack shit about what I'm doing, and to do things effectively, you have to be around people who are doing the same thing as you, you can bounce ideas off each other, and uh, you won't be as lost or as lonely. So, get in, do your networking, but don't think of it as networking. I don't think you should. I think you should think of it as, you know, building friendly relationships, finding new friends, finding mentors, people you really look up to and trust, and learning from them. And, I mean, the main, the main key here is don't do it for yourself. If you can bring something to the table for that person, bring it. And to get to that point, you know, I've you got to work on yourself a lot. I was, like I said, in dark places. I had low, low self-confidence just because I was always trying to meet people's expectations. But you have to reach a point where you are confident enough in yourself And you have to believe enough in yourself that you can make an impact on those people. And you really have to have the desire to to learn. You have to be humble enough to say you don't know if you're talking about something you don't know. Because all that's going to do is help you learn more. And if if you really take a step back and are okay with saying you don't know. I think all that can do is lead to more self-confidence in you. If you know what you don't know, you can use what you know and improve upon it and then apply that to the people around you. So swinging around and getting back to finding your passion and what you want to pursue, what you want to build, I would say start with what you think about on a daily basis. Are you thinking about, you know, accounting? Are you thinking about plumbing? Are you thinking about construction? Are you thinking about your family? Are you thinking about just being there as a provider? You know, considering all these things can lead you in that direction. For me, I've been lucky enough that I have essentially no responsibilities but myself. You know, I have family and friends around me, but they all take care of themselves. I don't have, I'm not in a serious relationship at the time. Um, And I don't have any kids, so I have no other responsibility besides myself. So it's all going to depend on where you're at in your own life, what your responsibilities are that can kind of guide you that way. But like I said, if you're thinking, if you have the talent and you're thinking about, I'm going to use music as as an example just because that's what I do. If you think about and play music on a daily basis and you really think that you have the ability to, to go out and make something of yourself 
make that a priority. I make a schedule every day in my iPhone notes with my to-do list. Write down the essentials, mark them down, plan those into your day, and then around that, plan on how you're going to go pursue your passion. And I th- I'll touch on this as with episodes to come. You know, making schedules, making plans, thinking on your feet, not being too set in your plans, but it's all, you know, having structure to your day-to-day is essential, especially if you're going to grow your own business. Before you start making your plans, you have to decide what steps and what actions you need to take in order to grow. So I would say I'm getting into more goal setting topics here, but start with your overall goals and work your way down into your day to day and add that to your schedule. And the biggest point, the biggest takeaway and whether or not you should pursue what you're thinking about daily, your passion. Is that going to help others? Is that going to benefit other people? Is that going to bring something to their life that they enjoy? Are you going to be able to help people, you know, face their struggles, get through their struggles, succeed? I think that's very important in building a business and building a brand. And if you can do all those things, if you have the talent, if you have the passion, if you have the, the ability to help others, if you have the drive, then I say start building it. I'm all about entrepreneurship, and I really have belief in everybody that they can do it. And this is a topic that I'm going to get into down the road, but I think society nowadays really pushes against that a lot. They say, just go get a job, fit into the system. And that's cool, especially if you need to, if you have family to support. If you like what you're doing and you don't want to go through all the struggles of building your business, building your brand, go get a job, work for somebody else if you love it, if it's going to pay the bills, and if you're helping other people. But without all that, your quality of life is going to be low, and you're going to go through some struggles. And I think that's where I'm going to end this third episode of the battle. Thank you for listening. Like I said, I'm going to touch on a lot of these topics down the road, have specific episodes for them. But uh, I think I'm going to leave it there for today. So find your passion. Do some thinking. Do some self-work. Get confident again, get in the gym, be physically active, and things will grow from there. Thank you for listening to episode number three of The Battle, and I will see you next time.